Welcome back to another episode of Astro Pill. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Dorothy, and I'm out in the hallway with, um, or not hallway, alleyway with Jill right now. We're gonna take a break and chat. Join us. Want one? Are you really offering a little girl a cigarette? Now you're a little girl? I always am. Innocence, however, is another matter entirely. But anyways, thanks. No, smoking seriously messes with my air filters and they're a hassle to replace. Don't mind me though, smoke to your heart's content. Oh my God, okay, remember the end of the last episode how I said you could bet I'm betting a million dollars is gonna play out exactly the same? Okay, all right, y'all owe me a bajillion dollars. Thank you, send directly to my PayPal, astroaxis at gmail.com. Thank you very much, I'll see you later. <laughs> so, why don't you tell me about this guardian of yours? I wanna know what kind of woman she is. Sure. Well, her name is Sophia Graham. Graham, Graham. G Graham? She's a retired PE teacher. Okay, was she like her PE teacher or something like that? Nowadays, she works at a gym during the morning shift. She's pretty fit if I do say so myself. She had a daughter. Apparently, she suffered from nano machine rejection all her life. Another, another victim, huh? And when she finally healed, she was hit by a truck. Oh my God, that's terrible. Jesus Christ, hold on, you guys, I'm gonna switch the ear that the earphones in my left ear is kind of sore right now, hold on. There we go. I'm usually, uh, wow, it feels weird to put it in just my right ear. I usually take one out so I can hear myself, um, so I can control my volume and everything like that, but uh, when I usually do one ear in, it's usually in my left ear, so it's weird to have it in my right. I'm not used to this, okay. So freaking sad, my God. Um, what was her daughter's name? I don't know, I never asked really. Wait, L Lenore? No, 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 she would have had two daughters then. Are you okay? I'm reading fear, or is that surprise? It's hard to tell. I'm fine, yeah, wait, read? Well, I don't see emotions like you do. I have to make do with a combination of body heat readings, face recognition, and context. I'm still a bit confused about some, but I've gotten better with time. Anyway, you sure you're fine? Yeah, yeah. Scared or surprised. She's not wrong though. Wait, does that mean your last name isn't really Hayes? Oh, Dorothy Hayes, okay. Hayes is just my artistic name. Sounds more exotic and that's what people usually look for in this business. I tried other names though. Dolores Hayes, Genesis Graham. Is it Graham or Graham? I mean, it's A-E, right? Graham? Like, like the A-E stuck together, you know, that makes it like an S sound? Graham? 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 I tried Dorothy Warrior once, but a legal team came out of nowhere and stopped me cold. Hmm. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if we've seen mention of a, like, like the magical girl. She wasn't called something warrior, right? She was model. She was model, model warrior, model warrior. So what's your legal name then? Rebecca Dorothy Willow Graham. A bit of a mouthful if you ask me. <laughs> so Dorothy's actually your second name. Oh, wait, so it's Rebecca? Rebecca, okay. Should I call you something like Becky then? Don't call me Becky. That's not my name. People have always called me Dorothy rather than Rebecca for some reason. That's why I chose it. It's useful too. People have people have tried to falsify stuff using my name and they always get caught. Because they use Dorothy Hayes as their name? Yep. Only my only my mom or a guardian calls me Rebecca, so it's weird to hear it from others. What about Willow? Willow's my first surname, actually. When I got registered, my guardian was married to a guy who had Willow as a last name. Shortly after I joined their household, they separated, so I was left with his family name first. Hold on, so your real name, in short, would be Rebecca Willow. Doesn't have the same pizzazz to it, if you ask me. Whatever you say, Becky. Stop it! It'd be like if I called you Julianne all of a sudden. Ooh, ooh she gonna freak. Mm. <clears throat> Whoa, that was anger I read just now. Lots of anger. I think it's weird enough if you call me Jill instead of Honey. Weird, huh? How you can end up feeling associated with a name that's not yours? Just like me, Aunt Axis. I have an uncle that always called me Tina. He kept calling my cousin Tina Jill for some reason. Neither of us mind it though, because he's calling us what he thinks we're called instead of mixing us up. That, and it's completely useless to try and correct him. That's annoying. But you know, maybe that effect is true for your clients too. How so? 
Well, you're worried about your clients not hiring you because you're you, right? But think about what happens when it's announced that a character will be played by a different actor. Sure, it's a character, but people are also going for the actor playing the character. Oh, what an interesting analogy. So you're saying they go for my roleplay instead of just mere roleplay. Sounds too far-fetched? Sounds plausible, actually. Okay, honey, I'll take my leave now. Don't want to take up all of your break. Thanks for the chat. See you at the party tomorrow. Bye. Oh, she's, ca Aww, I feel so happy. I feel so happy for her. I need to remember to buy more cigars. Oh, okay, so you're not just a cigarette person. You also like damn cigars, huh? You see me rolling. Okay. Back. Did I miss something? Unless you count the worst PB up. Uh, unless you count the worst PPV main event fight I've seen all year. Not really. No. Is that a play on PVP? All right. Going out. I'll have a word with Gogo. Gogo -Go outside. He was so hyped for that match. He must be devastated. Okay. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, hi, Say. Hi, Say. Good evening, Jill. How are you doing? The nightmares have stopped, so I'm sleeping better. That's good to hear. <clears throat> um, how about your injuries? My bones are healing nicely. My wounds finally closed. The scars itch a bit, though. Well, that's good to hear. Are you by yourself today? Yeah, I'm running a couple of errands by myself today, but I wanted to come here for a while. I also noticed the big guy from last time is outside. Buster? Stella doesn't want me being alone while I'm still healing, so she so she suggested uh, taking him with me. Uh, I see. What can I get you? Something cold. Sure. Something cold for say. Okay. Um, this is cold. Here you go. One, two. Uh, one, two. One, two. One, two, three, four rocks mixed. Okay. Here. Yeah, this is the one. Why drink something cold when the weather outside is so cold, too? It's not that cold, actually. But I've always had decent tolerance for the cold, so I'm not a good reference. So, Stella isn't with you today? She's throwing a mega Christmas party tomorrow, and is having a meeting today. Aw, we don't get to invite the two of them, huh? I'm just helping her by checking on some of the things she ordered. And here I was, all ready to invite you to the party we're throwing tomorrow. You're throwing a party too? Sorry about that. Can't really say no to Stella. Yeah, of course, of course, understandable. Maybe next time? If there's a next time at all. Don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. I, I wanna know that I want you to have a good time. Have fun, drink a couple of beers in our honor. <laughs> I will then. What are Stella's Christmas parties like? Probably extravagant. She's come, she comes from a rich family. They're really big. There's lots of food and drinks and music. Sometimes there's too much food though. So at the end of the party, she lets the staff take home whatever's left. She also buys toys for all the children of her staff members. Aw, that's sweet. Really? She says something about taxes or whatever, but during the whole thing, she just shines. She carries a beaming smile that I don't see any other day of the year. Many of the kids have even started calling her Auntie Ella. <laughs> Stella always does her best to put up a tough girl facade, but she's very much in touch with her inner child. Christmas, Easter, Halloween, name a party and she most likely celebrates it big. Interesting. Do you like parties, Jill? I don't mind them. They're a good place to see people. I'm not one to actively look for parties to attend, though. I just... Don't mind going to them. Ah, I see. I only go to parties that Stella's attending, because otherwise, I just stand there without anything to say. That and I'm not one to wear dresses, you know. You're not? I'm a tad too ripped. At least, yeah, you know. <laughs> you understand. They don't look cute on me. No, girl, no! Oh my god! You will have an amazing charm that is all your own. I mean, because you're ripped. You will look cute in anything you say. Don't even worry about it. Any girl gonna look cute in anything they wear, okay? Don't even worry about it, say. Although, with all this healing I have to do, I won't be as fit for a while. They're too, um, breezy, too. I feel like I'm wearing nothing. I see, I see. Understandable. Bet, but I bet you'd look good in a dress, Jill. It's been years since I last wore one. I wouldn't know. I mean, you're in a skirt. Close enough, right, Jill? Last time I wore one, I remember worrying my arms were too thin or something like that. Well, I mean, that's the opposite problem me. I got them, I don't know if um, English usually has this term, but like butterfly sleeves. Yeah, in, like in some other cultures, like 
that's what that's what it is the fat under your arm because you let it hang and they call it butterfly sleeves i got some of those i'm worried about my arms being too fat that's usually most people's worries yours is that you you're too you think you're too ripped every, every girl got different problems we all have a complex huh just like axis just said i mean even stella has her own that's hard to imagine oh but she does have one she distresses a lot about her bus size really if she's not that small, I think I'm smaller than her, in fact. Actually, it's the opposite. The opposite kind of complex, I mean. She thinks it's too big? She's a bit self-conscious about having a big chest. Is it like it's hard to tell with her usual outfit or something? Really? Again, I've seen bigger chests than hers, to be honest. Although, I guess comparisons are useless here. They rarely help with complexes. Well, she does go the extra mile to hide it. In fact, I have no idea how she does it. Oh, okay, so they're big, but they just look smaller, I guess. I mean, I've seen her before and after she tucks them away, but I guess I never cared enough to ask the specifics. That's also why when she goes out, she styles her hair in those, um, drills? They look a bit drilly, don't they? No, they're drills. They, they, them, them anime drills. She styles her hair like that to help divert attention away from her chest. That's interesting, okay. She seems affluent enough, why not go through a reduction surgery? Because she also kind of likes having that size. I see, a complicated relationship with your body, I understand. She takes her bus size after her mom, and Miss Carmine, 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 is quite proud of her chest. Puffing out your chest is a sign of confidence, and a bigger chest means more confidence to show. She says something along those lines a lot. Stella has quite the admiration for her mom, so I guess breast reduction would feel like betraying her? This is interesting, okay. Huh. I'm making it sound like she's hiding J-cups or something like that. I guess in a taller or thicker person, her size would be normal. She's just a bit shorter or thinner than the norm. Do you get self-conscious about your bus size, Jill? Not really. I've been more self-conscious about my height. That's interesting, because you know, a lot of girls, like, uh, you know, all the time could get worried about their body, different aspects of it, so I completely understand. I definitely used to care a lot more about, like, my weight or bus size. You know, just like regular girl things that you get worried about. But I've gotten a bit more confident over time. Um, I would like to get a bit more fit because I don't really exercise. But otherwise, you know, I'm pretty pretty comfortable in my skin. Although, it usually comes up whenever not being average height hinders me somehow. What about you? Yes and no. It's not about, it's not my bus size, but rather that I look too manly sometimes. Oh, but you're cute. I like how you look. And I can't help but wonder if bigger boobs would help with that. You're fine, don't worry. Thank you. Can I get you anything else? Hmm. Do you have something non-alcoholic? I do, give me a sec. Something non-alcoholic per se. Okay, hmm. Optional Carmatrine. This one doesn't have any. Okay, Bronson Extract. One, two, three, one, two, three, all blended. Okay. Spicy, classic, sobering. Here! Thanks! You're not one to drink that much alcohol, are ya? It makes me feel sleepy, or at the very least, makes my legs go numb. I don't know if that latter part is supposed normal. I don't know if that's normal. Maybe go see doctor? It's an annoying feeling, to be honest. It makes me wonder what's so good about getting drunk. I mean, I'm not above it, but it's not exactly a pleasant feeling. You might feel like you're sleepy even when you're- Oh, you feel like you're sleepy even when you're not? Your legs go numb, everything starts sounding funnier than it really is. What's so good about not being able to control yourself? Say, honestly, that's my question. And like everyone, again, everyone has very different opinions about alcohol. That's kind of what I wonder. That's a good question, actually. Usually people feel like, usually people like feeling numb because that numbness helps them forget their problems. Okay, that's, you know, that's one of the common reasons I hear. Even if we don't talk about alcohol, there's a portion of people that account, uh, even if we don't talk about alcohol, hmm? There's a portion of people that can't afford food or who are suffering from some pain that only alleviates when drunk or high. Okay, okay. It's good to hear more perspectives. It doesn't sound really logical on paper, but then again, humans are rarely, if ever, logical creatures. Despair and pain cloud your judgment and make you do stupid things sometimes. Ugh, yeah, I've seen that firsthand. This world has an ugly side nobody deserves to be a part of. <sighs> <clears throat> uh, there's also a matter of addiction, you know? You just you start just liking the drink, but then you need more of it, and before you know it, you're hooked. Okay, again, good to hear more perspectives. Oh yeah, that too. So tell me, what kind of party are you guys throwing? 
<laughs> Nothing fancy. It'll just be me, boss, skill, and a couple of regulars. I wonder if they're gonna end up showing up to our party anyway, but Christmas is such a big deal for Stella and for her to give back to her staff and stuff, so they probably won't miss that. They'll bring food, we'll chat for a while, and that's it. Man, that sounds so good. At least better than the whole planning madness Stella's throwing right now. If you ever throw something like that again, you let me know, you hear? Sure. Hey, say. Yeah? What do you plan on doing now? I'm gonna check one last errand before going home. No, I mean, what do you plan on doing now with the night White Knights disbanded and all? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I never prepared a plan B because I figured if you can go with pl Wait, if you can go with a plan B, why not just make it the plan A? I'm not the brightest person, so I never graduated from college or even high school. I could go for a position with the police, but it wouldn't be as thrilling. And I'm sick of blatant corruption. Sick of it. Oh, but I'm alive. Hmm? I learned something after that hell in Apollo Trust. Life is not something that you can just throw away easily. Clawing my way out of that place made me realize just how much I want to be alive. The body count left in the bank was ridiculous, but I'm still here. I don't know what I'll do, but I'm alive. I'll figure it out sooner or later. That's nice to know. Well, I gotta go. Bye, Jill. Good luck with the party. Please come again. Welcome to Valhalla, one right after the other, huh? It's good to see her. Good to see she's doing well. And yeah, you know, a lot of us don't know what we're doing, but we'll figure it out. Oh, hi, Mr. Detective Vondelay. Oh, hey there, girl. Give me a strong drink, won't you? All right. Something strong for Mr. Detective. Perhaps something manly? Okay. Here we go. I wonder what he's found out. Wait, so he, I mean, he found out about Apollo Trust and he's found out about um, the other hacker people too, right? I'm still confused about them. I didn't really catch the whole story, but he's probably on a new case then. Okay. I'm going to pick the most expensive manly drink on the menu just for you. Isn't that great? 160, 160, 170. Is it, oh, is it listed by price? No, I don't think they've ever said that. 140. Nope, it's not. It's not. 170, here we go. Most expensive manly drink I can find. One, two, three, um, one of these. One, two, three, four, one, two. All blended, all right. Yeah, I don't know, I wonder what he's back for. And he, he doesn't seem to like it that much here, but he's always coming back, so I don't know. Here you go. Yes, uh, this'll do. So what brought you here? Nothing special. I was just working on a case and I happened to be in the area. What kind of work? Tracking someone? A gun for hire. Is it Jamie? You keep Jamie out of this. What about the girl? Crimson something. Yeah, I wanted to hear more about that. I am tracking that girl. Oh, okay. Didn't you just get out of that job? I did, but the guy offered a huge amount of money and, well, I just couldn't refuse again. Well, it's your life, not mine. I wonder though, there has to be more to that whole thing than just acting as middlemen to look for some murderer. Hmm. Say. How safe is this place? We're protected by the BTC property laws, the walls are soundproof, and I really couldn't give less of a crap about selling info to anyone. Okay then. Wait, soundproof walls? Why? Did you see those vending machines outside? They're quite talkative, the bastards. It'd be annoying without those walls. All right then. Have you heard of Lord Lance Lavender? Triple L, LLL. Nope. He's some big name from Ka Kanye, like, is this a parody of the act Kanye Vania? Kanye, all right. His blood apparently has some weird reaction to Glitch City's nanomachines. Once in contact with the air, it does nothing. But if still fresh and touching someone's blood, the nanomachines will initiate a reaction. That, yeah, the more info on nanomachines, please. This is confusing. Essentially, they'll just eat through, uh, through the other person's body until there's nothing left. That sounds like a pretty bad sound, of, or rather side effect. Mm-hmm. That's like something out of a freaking horror manga. Mm-hmm. They're using him as a guinea pig to see what causes that reaction and if it could be used to fight nanomachine rejection. How, though? Nanomachine rejection is what people die from because I guess their body rejects the nanomachines, but how, what's, uh, what, how is this going to help? Is it to get the, the positive effect? It's like one of those things where it's a poison, but it can also be a cure at the same time. So they're trying to find the... the the cure part, but the poison part's pretty dangerous. Is it one of those things? Uh-huh. 
Well, it turns out, the Crimson Rose is his daughter. Oh, she left years ago to earn her living here, and he hasn't seen her ever since. He could be lying, you know. Doubt it. I did my research. She really is his daughter. Why didn't you figure that out earlier? I had no clue who was making the contract, and tracking all the messages to the source would have been too costly. Knowing who the sender was made things easier. I see. Can I get you anything else? Can I get you anything else? I'm slurring over all my words. You know what? Let's keep talking with Vondelay here about this whole Crimson Rose business and nano machine stuff in the next episode. Yeah, I really want to hear more about it because I'm very confused. I'm having trouble following. You're probably getting a better grasp on the concept than I am. Let me know. Let me know what you think. All right. See you next time. This is Axis. Over and out.